our next comic. You might have seen him on CMT and VH1. Please welcome Cletus T. Judd. How the heck's everybody doing? Good to see you. Lord, have mercy, God. How you doing? You know me, don't you? No, you don't. Hey, it's good to be here. I appreciate it. I was back there talking to that producer back there, and I, I asked him right then. I said, how long I got to do up there? And he said, you need to perform for about eight minutes. I said, if I could do that, I wouldn't be divorced four times. <laughs> what the heck? Nashville's growing. You know, I lived here for about 20 years. Now everybody here drives a crane. They're everywhere. <laughs> we got off the mummer. You know where the old strip joint is right there on Demon Brewing right there? I mean, look, we're at 50 pretty ones and that one ugly one. Every time I went in there, I got with that ugly one. Every time. These homeless people live here now look better than what I took to the prom. It's unbelievable. It's good to be back here, though. I can tell you, I didn't think I was going to make it. I, live, I lived here for about 20-something years, and uh, then I moved to Ohio, where I live now. I'm originally from Crow Springs, Georgia, which is about 200 miles from here. The only heavy industry we got in Crow Springs is a 313-pound Avon lady. Uh, <laughs> where the taxidermist and the veterinarian is the same fella. He's got a sign over his door that says, Heck, don't worry. Either way, you're going to get your dog back. So, uh, <laughs> But I was driving down here today. I ain't going to lie to you. I ain't going to lie to you. I'm driving down here today. I do morning radio up in Ohio. And uh, I didn't eat no breakfast this morning. We got about to Goodlettsville. And we stopped one of them Tigger Marts. And uh, didn't have much in there to eat, but them torpedoes have been in there. Them things on them rollers. Been in there since Christmas, look like. I mean, they're struggling to turn over on them thing, but y'all know what I'm talking about, don't you? And I thought, well, they, they'd like two or three for like 10 cents, you know? So I bought me a couple of them torpedoes and one of them frappuccino, caramel macchios, and all that stuff, because I hadn't ate all day. And was right outside of Goodlettsville, and about the time I got to right downtown Nashville, next thing you know, them torpedoes done started to go off. <laughs> y'all know what I'm talking about? Man, my belly got to hurt me. And we done come over here on 65, and I told my buddy Kevin, I said, Yo, you might pull over somewhere now. My, my stomach done got started sweating and stuff. You know what I'm talking about when, he, when it starts cramping like that. And he said, ain't nothing, nothing nowhere around here but a, but a Home Depot. I said, pull her in. Pull her in. We'll turn it into a Home Depot because I got to go. And look here, we got there at the parking lot, and uh, he said, man, we, we can't park. I said, park in a handicapped spot. He said, we can't. I said, I'm handicapped. Trust me, right now I'm handicapped. We get, and have you ever noticed when people start, you know, you, and we can look, we can talk about this. We girls and boys, we grown people. Everybody got to go every now and then. Your belly get to hurting. And then you're trying to fake it so nobody knows that you're going straight to the bathroom when you get in there. Because you got that walk going. You know what that walk is? Where you got everything locked down on your body. Everything locked down on your body but your feet. And I ain't been back to Nashville in like two or three years and come back in. I'd be a son of a gun. I walked in the Home Depot and the first guy working there to return like, what's up, Cletus? I said, can't talk, no. Can't talk. And I finally get, y'all know where the bathroom is at Home Depot, don't you? Where's it at? Plumb to the back. They need to take a lesson from Walmart and get it up to the front. But I busted on back there. And uh, let me get this chair here. Hell, I'm wore out. And uh, I walked in that bathroom, and thank gosh, wasn't nobody else in there. My, my good fortune or their good fortune, wasn't nobody in there. And so I thought, well, I, I'm going to get to the far stall down there. And I thought, no, I can't do it. can't do it. I got to go right here. So I pulled up in the handicap spot right there, that big door. And uh, I got on there, and I locked her down a little bit, dropped down there, and I'm resting comfortably. Got the door locked, and I'm looking at my phone. And you would think... With all the construction going on in this beautiful town, that some engineer would figure out how to make that door close all the way. <laughs> Why you got to leave that two-inch gap right there for everybody looking there and see? Have you ever noticed it? I guarantee they ain't been, you ain't never been in the bathroom stall, the door closed all the way. But there wasn't nobody in there, so I wasn't worried about it. So I'm sitting there. The next thing, about 30 seconds into it, here come another old boy. Must have had him a torpedo up there at the Tiger Mart. Because he was flat walking too through there. And I thought, well, surely God ain't going to see me. And he'll go down to the far end, get on with his business and do his deal, and we'll get on about our day. Well, here he come, and I'd be a son of a gun. We locked eyes right there in that crack. 
And he stopped, and I looked. We was playing peekaboo right there in the toy. And then I just gave him one of them. So that fool, instead of going down on the far end, he pulled up right beside me right there. I mean, a foot from me right there. And he dropped his britches. And everything in his pockets come over on my side of the toilet. I'm talking about his car keys, credit cards, quarters, old penny just going round and round and round. And I thought, well, I'll help him out a little bit, you know. So I'm kicking everything back at him. I get it. I get it. So I get everything back at it. And I'm sitting there looking at my phone. And listen, is there anything more uncomfortable in your life, girls or boys' rooms, to sit there in that bathroom when there ain't no music playing, <laughs> quiet as a mouse, and you hear this right here, listen. Then <clears throat> <laughs> 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 she went, oh, God. Thinking, dang. <laughs> so next thing I hear, an old boy say, uh, you doing all right? I thought, well, my God, can he see me? <laughs> Holy heck. And I said, well, I'm pretty good, you. He said, yeah. He said, you playing golf today? And I said, well, not right now. I ain't. Can't. Can't, can't play right now. He said, well, me, ugh. And uh, I said, he said, he said, well, what do you reckon the weather's going to do? Reckon we can get in 18 today? And I'm thinking, well, hell, I no, let me look on my iPhone, my flip phone, I'll tell you. So I go through my phone. I said, well, it looks like today, partly cloudy, high in the upper 60s, lows in the mid-30s. I don't know what it is. And next thing I hear this old boy say, uh, hey, uh, Larry, can I call you right back? Hey, some fat guy sitting over here talking. My dad blame me or all. <laughs> Hell, he's on the telephone over there. On the telephone. Off. Moved to Nashville in 1991. My mom was my biggest fan. I'll tell you this before I get out of here, and y'all been a great audience. My mom was my biggest fan. I went on to do great things, sold a bunch of records, uh, 25, 30 videos on CMT. It's been a wonderful ride all them years. And uh, my mom, well, thank you. My mom was my biggest fan. And I was doing a show in Memphis, Tennessee, right in the height of my career. I mean, I was hitting it lick. I was actually getting with skinny girls at that time. It's unbelievable. <laughs> And uh, she called me. She said, Lord God, son, you got to get home. She said, the paparazzi's camped outside the house. They got cameras up here on tripods. They shooting through the windows trying to get me in my, my purple negligee. She said, get your eight by tens and get your butt home. And I'm thinking, I've hit the big time, people. We drove all the way home. I called everybody I had. I said, get to mama's house. The paparazzi's over there. They got their cameras propped up. We're going to get an inquirer. Pulled around the door, uh, around the road there, and I'd be a son of a gun if they wasn't surveying land around our house right there. God bless y'all. That's my time. I'm pleased to see you. Thank you very much. It's good to see y'all out there.